Uh, first of all, as the other speakers, I want to uh, thank uh, the organizer, especially Roberto and Siddhartha, not just for uh, inviting me to this Congress, also for being at the, at the audience, because I have to recognize that uh, I have to look very in the past uh, of my, my self story to attend Congress, to found a Congress uh, where all the conferences are so interesting to me. So um, thanks for inviting me and to be here. Um, the, the work that I'm going to present, if the time is enough, uh, has um, two studies that uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, the work is done in collaboration with the group of Justin Halberda in John Hopkins University and also with the group of Liz Pelke in Harvard University. That's why I will present two studies because what, the first one is with Justin and the other is with uh, Liz. A brief overview, if it works. This is forward? Oh, okay. It comes. Okay, Th thanks. Uh, a brief overview. Um, I will start with uh, previous things about uh, what we have in Uruguay that calls Plan Ceibal. Plan Ceibal is a one laptop per child implementation in Uruguay, and we have the program 100% implemented in public schools. And also, I have to introduce uh, a concept that maybe some of you know about approximate number system because it's the concept that we base for the intervention that we are going to present. Then I will present uh, the first study that we have done in Montevideo with a big scale uh, sample of 500 kids through tablets um, with a team of Justin Halberda. And then I will present a small scale, a small scale uh, study that we have done last year with uh, Liz Pelke in Maldonado, another city of Uruguay. Uh, for, the, for the end, I will say some conclusions, some further ideas that we have. Let me introduce you to the Plan Ceibal. The Plan Ceibal is the one laptop uh, per child implementation. It was a, an initiative of the President Vasquez, who was a former president and now is the actual president. Um, so we can say that from 2009, uh, in Uruguay, every child from a public school has his own laptop, okay? But from 2013, every child from the first years of uh, schools have their own tablet, okay? And we get profit of this uh, initiative of the Plan Ceibal in 2013 because they introduced the tablet as a pilot program with 10,000 tablets in Montevideo, and we make our first study of uh, math improvement with um, these 10,000, but we took up a little sample of 500 kids of these 10,000, okay? Um, for those of you who are not familiar with math cognition, uh, approximate number system is something that we share with animals and is something that permit us to answer this question, for example. If, if I ask you how many people are in the picture, uh, probably you don't need to count to know that there is no 15 and there is no either 250. Uh, maybe, I hope, m mostly of you uh, would say something between around 50, let's say, and it's exactly 63 as far as I counted. Uh, so. This is a system that we share with animals and permit us to have an idea, a brief, a quick idea about the quantity, the numbers of the things that we are um, perceiving, okay? The kind of task that we use to measure this, um, this system is this one. So we ask people if, not, not how many uh, dots do they look, do they watch, so, uh, if they, if, they, if they were more blue or more, or more yellow dots. Uh, have you seen that? They were more blue or more yellow? 
Okay, so you, you have a nice uh, approximate number system. The, the, good, the good news is that if you have a good approximate number system, probably you are not so bad in math. So, so this is important because we can say, and the evidence is in, in this direction, that we can train approximate number system in order, in, in early stage of, of the life, in order to improve math performance, symbolic math performance, okay? And the evidence show that this is uh, more or less the relationship that we found in, in, in kids, okay? Also in adults. So with this idea on mind, uh, we went to talk with the people of Plan Ceibal in 2013 after we came from La School who was here in, in, in Brazil that was organized by, by Siddhartha. Because we realized there that having Plan Ceibal in Uruguay 100% implemented would be a great opportunity for doing this kind of research, apply this kind of knowledge to the real life in schools. So we went there and we took and we talked with um, president of uh, Plan Ceibal and said, well, we have this idea, what do you think? And he said, right away, yes, you can do it. So in, <laughs> in September of this year, we were in 10 different schools in Montevideo um, with, with 30 classes, working with 30 different classes of first degree, six years old, uh, in 10 sessions of approximate 40 minutes of training, about 500 kids from four different socioeconomic levels. Because in Uruguay, we also have all the schools categorized by the socioeconomic level, okay? And this is the map of Montevideo for those of you who never visit there. We, were, we, we would like to visit, the, that, that you come to visit us. But as far as you didn't came, uh, you can see that in the, in the periphery, you, you would see the, the schools who have lower uh, socioeconomic levels, and in, in near the coast, you have the better socioeconomic level uh, schools, okay? What we have done, uh, we use a classical design of pre-test and post-test measure, but we measure many things, so I, I'm not going to tell you all the details and, and all the data, I will just concentrate on two uh, tasks on two measures that we use for pre-test and post-test measures. Uh, the first one is what we call PUMA. It means it, it is a math test that we develop for this research especially. It is based on TIMA3, uh, the, the classical test that we use for, for assess um, mathematical abilities. And we call PUMA because it's Uruguayan math ability test or program or something like that. I don't know that, how to translate it. Um, and more or less, it looks, oh no, wait a minute. Ah, okay. Okay, I will show you in a moment. Um, we concentrate in this presentation in this data of the math assessment test and also in a task that, that we uh, developed for this research that was to measure time discrimination. This was in inspired uh, by a little kid of four years old that I will tell you in a moment how this idea came to us. Um, the intervention was based on uh, Panamath, this kind of task that I already showed you about do blue dots and, and yellow dots, okay? Just to have an idea about the Puma test, it was implemented in the tablet and the task that were presented to the kids were more or less this look like. Um, all of them were based on TIMA3 and, and emulate the TIMA3. That is a test that is not implemented in tablet yet, okay? I have no time to explain the details of this, but believe me, it works properly, okay? Also, we decided to measure time discrimination, and this was because uh, a lovely kid who, who's, whose name is Gishe, is my son, uh, three years ago when he has uh, four years old, came to me and said, Dad, let's go to play soccer, as, as he likes soccer pretty much. So I said, well, let me finish this. I, have, I, have, I need five minutes to finish this and we will go to play soccer. And he said, with four years old, he said, uh, okay, I know how much is, four, is five minutes. 
and I was just reading these kind of things, you know? So I said, how much is five minutes? And he said, it's counting until 200. I said, why? Because the other day, grandma told me that I have to wait for her for five minutes, and I don't know what to do. So I start counting. And when I arrive to 200, she arrives, <laughs> you know? <laughs> for me, also because I'm her, her, uh, his parent, his father. Uh, but for me, it was very clever um, reasoning, you know, because it's true that when you don't have exactly uh, the meaning of these kind of things, timing is a good, uh, it's a good manner. Know how much time is. It's a, a good manner for know that is to count, you know? So these things, obviously are connected in the brain. And of course, the original idea is not from Guiche. The original idea seems to be from Vincent, Vincent Walsh from London, who proposed in 2003 the atom theory, the atom theory, a theory of magnitude, who raised the idea that uh, we have uh, all together these kind of magnitudes, time, space, number, and all that stuff in the brain. Anyway, for this reason, we decided to measure time discrimination with a task that it was uh, really a success for the kids. So please, uh, let's show the task a little bit. Who was the monster who burps for more time? The, the violet one. Well, this was the task that the kids have to resolve during the, the measure, during the pre-test and post-test measure. So. Uh, it was very funny for them, and uh, also it was a little scared for the teachers, I have to say. <laughs> At the beginning, they looked like, uh, are you sure you're going to show these kind of things? But it works, and, and it works also for engaged kids in the task. So it was really a success. Um, the, the intervention task, as I told you, uh, was based on Panama task. So please, the video. Um, it was more or less like, th like this. And we had, videos are always tricky, okay. And um, kids have to signal with the finger, which is a box that have more dots, okay. There were different versions of the game because we train with these kind of games for four days in the middle of the training. So we, want, we, we wanted not to get bored to the, to the kids, but okay. So during five weeks, 10 sessions, our life was more or less like this. So uh, we went to school twice a week and we performed the sessions for 40 minutes with the kids directly, okay? Um, some of the results. Um, the bad news is that when we measure, for example, math performance at initial stage at, as a pre-test measure, we found the typical pattern that we already know about uh, socioeconomic status, okay? So we have an exponential growing of the math performance depending on how good uh, socioeconomic status is, okay? But the good news is that our intervention uh, not just give us uh, an increment in, in all CES levels, but also inverse a little bit the, the concavity of the curve. That means that probably our intervention are reducing the difference between the different levels of socioeconomic status, okay? We also obtain this kind of pattern for time discrimination performance. And I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to show you more data about time uh, discrimination um, results. Also, because Alvaro has a poster, well, he had already yesterday, but we can, uh, you can talk with, with him if, if you are interested in, in the data, because uh, time discrimination seems to be very important, the role of time discrimination to predict who are the kids who are going to get uh, major increments uh, for the intervention. So it's really interesting if you, if you found Alvaro around there, uh, you can ask him. Also, we were interested in trying to see which is the kids that gains more in the intervention. Um, let me check the time. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so we split the sample in two uh, big groups. The ones that were not so good in math at the initial level and the ones 
who were pretty good in math at the initial levels. At the initial levels, I'm referring uh, at the pretest measures, okay? So we found that for low level in math, the increment uh, through the intervention was much bigger than, oh, sorry, than for those of high level in math, okay? But if we look inside this little increment of high level in math, we observe that the big difference are for the low level cess of high level in math. So it means something like if you are good in math and also you came from a good uh, socioeconomic context, the intervention was, uh, I, it's not going to be very beneficial. But you, if you are um, from a low socioeconomic context, probably you obtain a bigger beneficial from benefit from the uh, intervention. Okay. Uh, so to conclude this first study, our results show an improvement in symbolic math and time um, for all levels of CES, but interestingly, the improvement in math performance is higher for less competent in math, competent in math kids. Also, these findings support the idea that approximate number system and symbolic math are related and raise the possibility that this type of intervention may be beneficial for less competent kids and also for high competent kids, but if you came from a low level CES, okay? But we finished this study and we, we received some comments from the teacher that make us think many things that probably some of you are thinking. The teacher says, oh, this was perfect. Kids are so motivated, and, but we cannot do it. We need you to, came here, to come here and do this kind of intervention. So we were worried about it. So we, we changed our perspective and says, okay, which is a factor that are um, getting farther the teachers from the intervention? And, and the factors were the tablets. So we went to a small scale study without tablets and we changed the training program for a cards hands-on games, okay? And we, we make the Punta del Este study that we call with this kind of games, the same kind of games of dots, but also in the cards, we put the numbers of dots in the back, okay? So the training was based on card games that teachers play in their classes because they feel like the materials that they usually use, okay? You probably understand this. So let me present the kids just briefly. We were just two groups, two small groups. Sorry for Sean that says that we, we, we don't have to, to make this kind of study, but this is the beginning, just the beginning. We, we are planning to make a big scale study with this kind of approach. Uh, the two groups we are going to call the Gabriela's group, is the name of the teacher, and the Brenda's group. They were more or less the same, um, but the difference, they, they were different in math performance level at the beginning. Just for random, I mean, the, the Gabriela's group were worse in math than the um, Brenda's group, okay? Uh, let me go quickly for that part. It was a crossover intervention um, design. Um, and we, we implement two kind of games. One was a comparison task, like, like the one that I show you in the tablet. And the other one is, is an addition uh, task where the kids have to say which color had more dots, but they have to zoom these uh, red dots. And in the, in the back, they have the, the zoom, symbolic uh, presented, okay? Um, this was more or less the, the, the ambient in the classes, the, the um, You can see that the kids were very engaged, and you can see also that some of them, for example, the one of in, in my left, is using the numbers, and the others are not using the numbers. Can you see that? This, this is going to be important afterwards. Okay, I, I have no time, so I have to rush, sorry. Uh, we, we use just two kind of um, measures for dependent variables. Uh, we use uh, an addition test, a traditional addition test inspired on, on, on the work of uh, Heide and Spelke. 
And also, we want to measure as a control measure a vocabulary test. Okay, these are the characteristics of, of the of the test, and this is one of the protocols of the kids, just to see how the kids at the beginning were assuming, were, were adding numbers. Okay, it, this is very interesting to think about, which is the process behind the addition at the beginning of the of the uh, learning process in math. However, some results, vocabulary test. We didn't obtain any effect. That was we were expecting, so that's very clear. But what about the addition test? Yes, OK, so I, I will finish, I promise. Uh, <laughs> what about the addition test? In the group of Gabriela, who were intervented at the second time, we did indeed obtain a nice increment. Uh, we would like to think it's because of the intervention. But in the group of Brenda, we obtain also a big uh, increment in the intervention in, in the intervention period, but also uh, we measure afterwards an increment in the math performance without any intervention. This could be uh, by some carryover effects. We don't know that because we don't have the fourth measure that we would like to have, but we didn't have time in the in the in the school schedule to to measure the fourth time. Or also, it could be motivational effects. Because it's also true that the kids and also the teacher were very involved with intervention and, and they were like, OK, this works and whatever. Okay, So we don't know that. Still, we want to look a little deeper in the data. And we split the data in the two groups that we split in the other, in the other sample, in the other study. Do you remember? So the ones that have low level in math and the ones that have um, but, um, Low level and, and high level in math, OK? If you look at the effect of the intervention in the blue group, you would see that the distribution of this eff effect is more for the low level in math and no for the high level in math. But more or less contradictory with this result, the red group have his effect more concentrated in the high level in math. What happened here? It works for high level or it, works, or it works for low level in math? Well, we think that it works for a medium stage level, generally speaking. When we measure the low level in math of blue group, this is around 40%. Because the blue group was, a, was a, the best one in math at the initial level. Do you remember that? And the good ones in the red group have around 52%. So our intuition is that it seems that the stronger effect of the intervention occurs when certain performance in math is present. It means that it's not good if you are so good, but it's not good if you are so bad. To conclude, our results show an improvement in symbolic math for both studies. In the first study, the improvement in math performance is higher for middle level of sets. And in the second study, where every kid was from low level sets, I didn't say that, the improvement in math performance appears from a certain level of initial performance onwards. Taking together such results suggest the possibility that this type of intervention might be beneficial for everyone. But data also reveals that it is from a certain point of knowledge that intervention could be really advantageous. Also, these findings support the idea that we can use ANS stimulation uh, with transition to symbolic math to improve math, but more importantly, raise the possibility that transforming this type of intervention in pedagogical strategy could involve teachers in this kind of intervention, and this could be the key for make that this intervention works. So thank you very much, and sorry for my time delay.